to help you work on your deep squat hold and getting into that position. Now squatting is always directly related to the functioning of your ankles and how those ankles move, glide, how mobile and how strong and stable they are. One of the best ways and the most thorough ways to increase the mobility in that ankle is the three point ankle drop. So this is where we reach down, we rub in that middle zone, the outside zone and the inside zone and then we go into our three point drop. So toes go under, dropping down through there, dropping that ankle out to the side, working that outside zone and then kicking the toes out to the outside and then dropping down on that inside zone. I dare say if you're having trouble with deep squat, you're going to be finding when you come to that inside zone that you're barely going to be able to get that uh, big toe onto the ground because of the pulling through there. If that's the case, just spend more time doing it. You can also add in some massage work. So grabbing your ankle and just driving that heel, excuse me, driving that heel up and down to mobilize that ankle and rubbing nice and hard all around that malleolus joint. Uh, really just to try and break down some tissue through there. Following up from the three point ankle drop, we're going to move up and into some lumbar rolls. So lumbar rolls, I just want to imagine a big tall robot, just power down to the side, dropping all the way down, rolling down through here, leaning into extension, and we're going to do that about three to five times each direction uh, on each side. I've just done up a specific thoracic video, which will pop up shortly as well, and there's several uh, exercises in that. Now this movement up here is really going to help you get out of this position, and then get you out of through here, and get that spine up nice and tall, nice and high. So, jump over to that thoracic mobility video. For this one here, I want you also to do some trigger point work on your hip flexors. So, you've got your two bony, uh, points up through here, the ASIS, and then around to the side, you've got another big bony bit through here, the greater trochanter of your femur. That triangle through there is going to offer a great deal of stress uh, and tightness and restrictions to your squat. You can either you can even increase that movement down to behind that hip joint into those external rotators of the hip joint. So anything through there, so directly below that bony, uh, the ASI, it's the front part of your hip, all the way through there, all the way along the side, and then down into that horseshoe position, anything through there is going to offer you the most value in releasing that tissue. With your trigger point, hold it for about 60 seconds before moving on to the next one. Yes, 60 seconds. It's a long time, but that's how it's going to get to work. Following on from our trigger points, and directly after your trigger points to really get it to work effectively are the hip flexor nerve glides. So right angle with that front leg, knee directly underneath hip, toes curled under, belly button in, thrust that pelvis, squeeze that glute as hard as you can and then glide in through there. Repeat about eight to 10 times each side. Now it's that position there of that pelvic thrust and that is an issue in the deep part of your squat. So when we're dropping down through here, spine rolling, your bottom is really rolling under into what's called a butt wink, which is basically a posterior tilt. Now generally that's okay, but if you have a look at this position here, you can see my thoracic spine is rounded, my lower back is rounded, and then my bottom is really unable to either drop further or engage and come out of that squat, I have to use my lower back. Essentially we should be nice and tall, dropping that bottom down with a nice flex straight spine. So the thoracic drills, the lumbar rolls, they're going to be important in getting that spine nice and strong. I also want you to imagine when you're doing it, that there's a ruler from the center point of your chest to your belly button. And that's your cue, you can't collapse that. We're sitting up nice and tight, and we're dropping down, keeping that ruler nice and straight. So that's there, that then indicates that there's some pelvic floor dysfunction. Pelvic floor and trunk stability through here is going to be related to glute stability, which is related to your ankles, which is also related to your ability to mobilize that lower back and stay nice and strong and stable and neutral in that thoracic spine. So that's how it starts to lay across. And that's why, why when I say something silly like your ankles control thoracic spine or, or are related to it, it's just that movement chain up. And that's what I mean by that. So after the hip flexor glide, 
Let's move into a weighted squat hold. So you can get yourself a kettlebell or a heavy weight, as heavy as you can manage, and we're going to drop down and just push ourselves down as hard as I can. So the extra weight through here is really gonna force that tissue to stretch. In this bottom position here, what I want you to do, instead of just holding, is I want you to squeeze everything. So squeeze that thoracic back, push those knees out, and really try and imagine that you're pulling those knees out. You see my knees moving, and I'm doing that by getting my glutes to engage, pull that out, and pull myself into the ground. I'm using that to really pull myself down and upright. And that's how tissue changes will change over a period of time. Not through static stretching, that will make it worse, but through engaging the muscles, controlling it, teaching your nervous system to be stable there, then relaxing, breathing through it in this position and then coming up out of it. Now, if you don't have access to a weight or you want to try something else again, we're going to go to a pole hold. So grab a pole, get your spine nice and straight, dropping back and down and really just using that to help keep your thoracic up and you'll find that you'll be able to get a lot deeper, a lot easier. Now, even myself doing this, I find that I can get deeper, which indicates to me that I've got room for improvement in my deep squat. And I think I always will have room for improvement in my deep squat. So should everyone. Holding each of those for quite a while, again, focusing on the squeezing out and the pulling, pushing yourself into the ground. Following up from that, uh, one of the strengthening exercises for a deep squat hold. Now, a back squat, that's just going to force those issues in. A front squat's going to be limited by your shoulder mobility, which is an issue here, obviously, and it's also just going to be a bit unstable. So my go-to is a kettlebell goblet squat or a dumbbell or a just a barbell plate uh, squat, a bumper plate. We hold that kettlebell out in front of our chest and we're gonna drop down as deep as we can Squeezing that kettlebell hard, we're trying to collapse that kettlebell by pushing in. Your elbows can drop down or they can stick out to the side. Spine nice and long, push yourself and pull yourself into the ground, driving up, dropping down. So that kettlebell goblet squat is going to be your go-to strengthening exercise after you've done all of that mobility work to get you into a good position. As I said, jump over and try that thoracic mobility set. Try all that for about you know, one session to a week and see if you do get an improvement. If it's going to work, it should work after doing all those exercises and your thoracic drills, and you should get some improvement, whether that's 1% or 10%. Just try it and then come back and visit me again. Tell me how you're going. Try it each day for a week, and then we'll touch base again, go from there. Thanks, Dado.